Welcome back everyone to another episode of the Build and Learn series in Stanford Bay. I hope you've enjoyed diving into this build with me. And I really appreciate many of your comments and I'm glad that I'm able to help inspire or give you an alternative way of thinking about building your cities. I'd love to hear your thoughts about what we could do in future episodes, so be sure to drop some suggestions down in the comments below. Today, we're jumping into city services, primarily your basic needs for all your citizens in your city. We're going to get those set up, laid out the way I want, and we'll do a couple other odds and ends while we're diving into our city build. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a like and drop a comment down below with your thoughts. And as always, be on the lookout for future episodes and make sure you've checked out the previous episodes. So with that, there's a couple of things we need to do right off the bat. We need to get electricity flowing and we need to get water flowing. Now, some of you may have thought we should have done that before laying out the downtown. It's OK. I played primarily on pause, although some folks slipped into the city. But ultimately, like we haven't really progressed much. So now we're going to get these set up. Sometimes I do it beforehand. Sometimes I do it after getting downtown. It just sort of depends what your preference is. But the video felt really empty without something, some sort of skyline or some sort of buildings in place. One thing I tend to do with all of my cities for some reason is I add a water tower. <laughs> I don't know where this fascination came from, but I always put it near a highway, sort of like an entrance highway to a city. Now I have mods running, so I have a mod that currently disables the need for me to have to run water pipes and electricity lines all over the place. It's just something I've done so much that I kind of know how I want to do it. So now I just sort of focus more so on other things, and this expedites the process of making some of these videos. However, if you do still need to lay your water pipes, if that's something you enjoy doing, this is how I would do it, and that is basically following your roads. Don't just draw water pipes everywhere. This keeps it very organized and clean, especially while your city is developing or gets much larger. Drawing your water pipes under the roads makes everything look very, very clean and neat. Highly recommend trying this sometime if you have not already. I am pretty excited to see that cities too, like the roads handle some of this. I mean, I don't think it handles all of it, but some of it, that's kind of a nice refreshing take where we don't have to draw all these water pipes all the time. I'm hoping that also can help with performance, maybe not but I guess we'll see how it runs very soon. Now, I'm not running a ton of assets to create some of the water filtration stuff. I've done that in the past. It's kind of fun to build like your whole little water plant area. Uh, it can be a neat little project and it kind of adds like a little area that you need in your city, you know, something designated to something very specific that you have to have a little bit of land isolated for. That's fun, but we're not really gonna go that deep into it today. So instead, I'm going to be using primarily vanilla assets or assets that have come with some of the DLCs, content creator packs, that sort of thing. We need to plan out an area for our water treatment facility. I will say this off the bat. I don't typically like to pour sewage back into the river. I just don't like the way it looks. So I tend to avoid that. Looking back, most of my water filtration or treatment areas is done in industrial parks or near them. I guess that tends to work out in terms of pollution and how that operates. So I tend to keep it close to that or like on the edge of an industrial park. But with that in mind, we do have to set up some infrastructure. So I'm going to make some road adjustments and try to get this area to start looking like it's formatted for industrial. Now, one thing you will notice is as I'm doing some of these service type things, I'm focused on trying to build them up a little bit more than they need to be. And part of that is to make them look a little bit more impressive in terms of scale and stuff, because they are city services, right? And since I'm not going to be leaning on many assets from the workshop for a lot of this like it's just trying to get it to give the appearance that it's more than just like one building doing this sort of operation. So near our cargo station, I'm going to go ahead and set up a small grid area so that we can support a little bit of industrial here, as well as some of our basic services. I would say sometimes like you have to look at your industrial areas in terms of pockets, not just this mass of ever growing industrial space, right? Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to do, especially this early. But what I'm going to try to do is go ahead and make these roads look tired and, and worn out from trucks driving on them and just create a little bit of an industrial park here. Uh, it's also going to have good access to highway and infrastructure. So I feel like as we evolve the city, this could be a nice little spot for just a solid industrial pocket. Now I'm going to go ahead and place more than one of these inland eco-friendly uh, water treatment facilities. I'm going to go and get them down. I'm not going to do any sort of crazy detailing to them. And again, if you want to lean on more workshop assets, you can. I'm not so worried about it right now, but you can make entire treatment facilities out of some of the workshop assets. Some of them are really, really great at just giving the overall appearance that you have a massive uh, facility set up. I'm going to use two of these just to get the kind of look down. Like, again, it's more substantial than what it is, I guess. Because sometimes I feel like the vanilla buildings just don't quite add up. They don't, I don't know. How to explain it they just don't feel like they fit the sort of uh, need that is required by them later on i might go back and add some more assets to this and make it look a little bit more robust but for now i think this will get us set up now in terms of water pumping stations i'm going to use the vanilla ones although there are some really decent workshop assets you can again replace these with 
I'm going to set up another water facility for bringing water into the city. Uh, this is going to be a little bit out of the way, closer to where I had initially intended to include more industrial. I think this will be another industrial pocket at some point. We need to adjust our roads to accommodate the area. That's no big deal. Infrastructure obviously should be made to be adjusted like we've talked about before. So this could also be another little industrial pocket over here on this side of town or maybe something just more focused on some city service oriented stuff. Like I said earlier, I'm going to try to create an area that's a little more dense in terms of what buildings I'm using to make it seem more substantial. In so many of my builds more recently, I've tried to focus on trying to use vanilla buildings more, right? And then I try to add or double up some of those buildings to create facilities that seem more appropriate again for the scale of the city. I've gone on before and I've downloaded a ton of workshop assets and I've built up these areas. And again, right now I'm trying to make this series pretty accessible. So I'm going to lean on some vanilla items. And then as we go, if we feel like we need to add some workshop assets, I will. Uh, obviously, I've leaned very heavily on the workshop for things like the skyline, the downtown area. And there's plenty of other areas where we're leaning on a lot of workshop assets. So I'm just trying to find ways of curbing some of that and utilizing what's in the game as often as possible. And sometimes that means being creative with the assets you have. So if you are using vanilla assets, it might be just doubling up on something or it could be sort of bending the truth behind what the asset is for. For example, do we need these three other buildings to help us with the city right now? Maybe not, but it helps make the area look like something is established. Like it's not just two little water pumps and that's all we need to produce water. And I feel like that's a helpful way to adding some form of realism to whatever you're building. Now, in our last video, we talked about the repaint mod and we said how helpful it can be to kind of change the color of buildings so that you can use buildings multiple times. Let me give you another reason this mod is very, very awesome. It can give you a little bit more of a wear and tear look on some of your vanilla buildings. A lot of times I put vanilla buildings down and because of the LUD I'm using or just the building itself, it tends to be very bright. For example, you see the white walls of the building or facility and it doesn't look quite like maybe it needs to, right? So add a little bit of gray and all of a sudden you get a building that looks like it's a little worn and older. It's been there for a minute. And it's more of like a city building, you know, that's that's seen its better days. It's not brand new. And ultimately, that's what I'm going for for buildings like these. So it's kind of nice to be able to transition that from something that's overly bright and captures attention to something that looks a little bit dated. So now we need to get power installed into the city. So I'm going to set up a little more infrastructure to help support that. Much like we've done already, I'm going to use multiple buildings to create a sort of impression that I want. I want it to look a little more substantial than it does with just vanilla assets by themselves. Again, this is an area where there's a bunch of workshop assets you can pull. I think there's like one nuclear power plant that has a ton of assets that look really, really great that you could build out a whole facility. I'm not going to do that here. I don't think that's what I'm looking for right now. Instead, I'm going to bend some of the vanilla assets to sort of fit what I'm looking for to some degree and create something that may just look more like generic industry than anything else. I think it's okay to take buildings like services, for example, like power, right? And make it just look like it's industry in this industrial park you're setting up. Obviously, if you want something like a big power plant and that's a feature of your city, it would make sense to do that and set it up appropriately, right? But for me, I'm also looking at, okay, how can I take something and just make it look like it fits the area, not just its intended purpose? So guess what I'm suggesting is be creative with how you use buildings, especially vanilla buildings. There's a ton of stuff there. It's not always ideal to use it for what it's saying it's used for, right? Uh, you can sometimes tweak that purpose a little bit and make it fit what you're looking for instead of the purpose intended by the game. Now that we have something set up for our power, let's go ahead and work towards something to handle garbage. I'm going to be using the same industrial area that I've already started to set up. And once again, I'm focused more so on giving the appearance that we have factories and facilities here to handle multiple things. It doesn't all just have to be like, oh, trash is here, power's here, water's here. Blend it together, utilize the buildings the best you can to make maybe the start of what this industrial park can eventually be. Because later you can go back in and add multiple buildings to help fill the area out and make it more dense if you'd like. In fact, something I'll probably do here that I've already done in a city I'm building on stream is I've taken factories from the industries DLC and I've combined them in areas where I have like power and garbage and I've made like a whole industrial park, a very, very industrial looking space complete with warehouses, factories, plenty of smokestacks, all giving this impression of a very dense industrial area. Now, again, to make something look less like it's a vanilla asset, I'm using the repaint mod to darken some of the colors. This gives it a little bit more of a texture. You can see it a little better. Plus, it adds some wear and tear. I'm going to utilize this quite a bit. So if you see me jumping to that tab where I'm picking colors, that's what I'm working on. And I'm trying to make everything look like it's not brand new. In fact, that's something that tends to be lacking in cities is that everything looks so pristine. And it shouldn't really. There should be wear and tear. There should be some sort of 
degradation of areas. And that's important because I think that's a distinction that you can make between a city that looks more realistic is having areas of wear and tear. Using industry roads, using decals, for example, are really good ways of starting to add that kind of difference maker in your city to look separate or different from areas that are new, maybe high value areas, maybe an area that is more of a resort, right? That should look more pristine versus an area that looks worn and torn. Now, one thing that I try to do that I sometimes don't always do very well is I try to make sure that some of our buildings that are going to require a lot of access, for instance, garbage disposal buildings, I try to put them off of main roads. I don't want them directly on the main road to help filter traffic away from like blocking up some of our arteries. I don't always excel at this, though. I do try to set up some areas specifically to handle a little bit more of that traffic by like, trucks, semis, stuff like that. As we back off, you can start to see this area getting built up a little bit, which is a nice feeling, right? For handling garbage, I don't tend to use landfills. Instead, I'm going to use recycling centers and waste uh, disposal buildings. And then we also can use the waste transfer facility to help add a little bit of density to this and diversity because I'm using multiple buildings. Whereas if I use a landfill, I'm kind of pasting the same building down again. Thankfully, in Cities 2, I think you're able to kind of draw your landfill area, which will be a really unique feature added to the game that'll give us, I think, a little more purpose for using that type of building. So with some tweaks, I think this area is starting to fill out the way I would like. Now, we can also go in and add parking, parking for employees that might work here. Again, giving the impression maybe there's more than just power and garbage running through this area, but instead it's like factories, warehouses, and a lot of buildings that are going to utilize or need a lot of sims to operate these facilities. Once again, we're sort of bending the truth as to what these facilities are and trying to give it a little bit bigger of a purpose. And feel free to move buildings around as areas adapt to what you're looking to set up. For example, I'm going to move one of our facilities into this pocket because I've sort of created a pocket as I've moved roads around to work, I think, more efficiently. Over time, you kind of get really, really in this mindset of just filling space. And I think that's really important cities is to find areas where you can just fill the void. That tends to add to the density and make things look more realistic, in my opinion. I think when you first started on cities, it's all about building roads to accommodate buildings. And now I build sort of infrastructure and I make buildings sort of fit those spaces, I guess is a different way of putting it. As if the roads tend to predate the building and we sort of place buildings where roads will accommodate them. Now let's get some emergency services added to our city. First, we're going to start off with a hospital. I'm trying to figure out where to place this. I wanted to put it kind of on the bottom side of downtown, but I realized it's not really going to accommodate the space I want because I like to set up my hospitals with a little bit of a campus. That may be as simple as adding a parking garage and some additional parking lots to accommodate the population that may work or be at the hospital at any given time. This seems to be pretty realistic as you see most hospitals, larger ones, have a lot of this added to their facility, like walking paths, everything. Doctor's offices will be on campus, so I want to create that sort of look here, and we're just going to focus more so on the parking side added to this main building that I actually really like. In addition, placing this here helps out with the fade we talked about in the last episode, the tapering from our city skyline, the, the peak area, all the way down to something more along the lines of our midtown. I'm going to keep this campus area rather limited, though. I'm not going to draw roads inside of it and make all these different exits and entrances. Instead, I'm going to focus on this being maybe a hospital that's grown into the block that it's placed. Finding out how to place assets within this sort of block can be rather difficult. So take your time, find opportunities to shift the buildings around, look for what seems to work best. I don't want all the ambulances just coming out of the hospital and running onto the main avenue. So I'm gonna to try to turn the building and see if that works. Even though I like the long facade of the building on the main road, I'm just gonna see if I can find a different way of placing everything so that it works a little bit better for what we're trying to set up here and doesn't harm traffic too bad. Ultimately, filling up these city blocks is a similar process to what we did in our last video with designing our skyline. It's very helpful to lay out all the assets you want to use within that city block, right? And then start shifting them into place. It becomes filling up a puzzle. Sometimes this process is very simple and you get it done within a few minutes. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to figure out. And ultimately, I'm not too worried about like the extra green space here. I think I can use that for a couple walking paths and make some areas where we have some green space within our hospital campus. However, if you're looking to fill in some of that green space, I have a great asset that I've used on a few of my videos before that I'll remind you guys about, and that's brushes. These brushes are really, really helpful, along with Surface Painter, but Surface Painter has a little bit of an issue where sometimes it causes like this tearing look on certain textures. The brushes can be really helpful to add certain textures down. For instance, pavement is probably the most popular one that I use. 
It can fill in some of the spaces, especially when you have like breaks in the pavement, like near parking lots or buildings, and you just wanna continue that without getting into a lot of prop assets. This is really, really nice to have in your inventory. I'll be sure to add a link below in the description, or you can find it on my asset list, which is also linked below along with mods and the map. So now that I've got some walking paths in here, you can start to see this campus feel coming together, right? It doesn't look so much like it's just a couple buildings in a block with some parking lots. I'm integrating it more with the space around itself and making it feel and look sort of appropriate. Like you can walk to the hospital, you can take a car, you can park, you can stay there. You also have the emergency area and a parking garage, all suited to this one space. Once you start doing some paths and stuff like that, sometimes it, that's all you need just to make it feel like it's integrated into that block and it's not just something you threw together. And now once we get into landscaping a little bit more and we start making some of those added details to the green spaces, it's really gonna look integrated and it's gonna look very, very nice. And this is vanilla assets with a couple parking lots from the Steam Workshop. Now this may be disappointing, but I'm not gonna really do anything crazy with the fire department. Instead, I'm gonna plop it in town and use it as a filler building for my downtown area also helping with tapering the buildings down to a lower level as we exit the downtown space. For fire departments, you often don't really see a campus necessarily. It's usually just a building with the appropriate outlets for the trucks. So I'm just gonna integrate it into our town. I just need to find a spot where I feel like it fits the best. And this is most likely gonna be at the bottom of downtown with buildings of similar height and scale. What I might do later is go download a couple options from the Steam Workshop to include some fire stations a little bit away from town, especially in suburbs, something that looks more appropriate. Now, with police stations, I'm often a little torn here. I don't feel like all the buildings sort of match what I'm looking for. I've downloaded stuff from the workshop before to fill that void of needing a good police station that sort of fits what I want in the city. Uh, I'm going to use the intelligence agency, which may be a little bit wild for some folks, but these buildings often just don't have the scale for like a big city police station. I feel like police stations, you're often in the territory of wanting to do something like a campus, sort of similar to how we did the hospital. Although I don't intend to do a lot of landscaping for this one, it's just more so going to be the building and a couple extra parking lots to accommodate police cars, patrol cars, and some folks visiting the police station for whatever reason they may have. Now off camera, I made some slight infrastructure changes, just added a couple roads, and we're going to go and add a public library in. Again, another building that's a little bit closer to the ground, not as tall, so I feel like you can help us with our fade. I'm going to adjust the color to darken it up a little bit, get rid of some of that vanilla feel. And then additionally, I want to show you a really, really quick tip for detailing. This is jumping ahead a little bit, but this is a really, really good mod to have if you want to get into using vanilla assets, but also giving them a little more life and making them look a little better. You can use the mod BOB and with BOB, you can re replace props and assets with stuff you find off the workshop. I've talked about various methods for detailing and mods that help in some of my detailing videos, but this is definitely a mod that is work smarter, not harder. You can replace individual trees, bushes with stuff you have off the workshop and instantly that building starts to look significantly better or matches the style of your city. For example, if you want palm trees at the public library, you can do that here by selecting specific items on the left that you want to replace and then choosing out of your inventory of items on the right and then hitting the check mark, you suddenly now have replaced those trees or assets that you want to with something that looks better or more appropriate to what you're setting up in your city. Now there's a couple more buildings I want to get in place just to make sure I've covered all my bases and I have a few things in that we can tweak and tailor later. One is the tram depot. Since we added tram lines in the last episode, I want to go ahead and make sure that this is installed so that we can get this running as soon as we start opening the floodgates for people to move in. I feel like this is another building that can help us fade out of downtown, so I'm going to place it right at the outskirts. Additionally, it needs to be because it needs to be connected to the tram lines. And since I don't have any lines running away from downtown, I think this will be helpful just to have right at the edge here. Now, jumping back towards the industrial park we were working on earlier, I'm going to do a little infrastructure change here, add a few roads so that I can accommodate a few things. A, I think this might be an area where we could have some housing or some residential buildings of some sort, but also incorporate some commercial buildings maybe. Regardless of what we decide to do, I want to go ahead and add a bus station in something larger that is slightly away from downtown. This may be the bigger bus station as a part of our town, but sometimes I see these sort of away from downtown in areas like near industrial pockets. So I thought it'd be cool to have this already set up, sort of isolated on its own. Now with that in place, we can also add our bus depot and have this area basically set aside for buses and public transportation. Additionally, let's go ahead and drop a taxi depot. So that's in place, another building that we can add to sort of this industrial side of town. And it's also really helpful to find these little buildings you can put in, especially that are vanilla and easy to place that don't require a lot. You can fit them into little areas where maybe you're just not really sure what to put, like right next to this bridge on the corner. 
Hopefully this works out well. I'm hoping it doesn't cause a huge traffic issue. Add a parking lot in and boom, we're set. So finally, I think there's one more thing I wanna go ahead and get implemented into the city while we're on this topic, and that is postal service. This isn't something I've normally paid a lot of attention to, but I do feel like we should go ahead and add it. So I'm gonna tuck it in here with our bus station and depot, just so it fills some space between these roads and the highway, kind of an awkward spot as well. It's gonna need some probably tailoring and work anyway. Well, the first building we put down is the sorting facility. I'm gonna go ahead and add a post office for our Sims to use whenever they feel like it. And I'll probably add a couple more of these later down the road as we need them and as our city begins to expand. But for now, we have one that may end up being centrally placed. I guess we'll see how things turn out as we progress. Speaking of progressing, we're kind of in that area now where we can start laying out just about anything we want with a little more freedom. We don't have to worry about services. We have our downtown set up. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of areas that need a lot of love and detail and some added features. Um, I think there's also a need to create some little signature areas, right, with a couple of different buildings. Um, I'd love to get some stadiums in. I think that might actually be an episode at some point where we add sports venues and see how that goes. Now, with this parking lot I've added to the post office, I want to change out some assets. Now, with BOB, again, you can change trees and props. So as you can see, I'm going through a list and just switching out various props. I don't really have anything to replace the hedge with right now. And the hedge, according to this building, is labeled as a prop. So I may need to go back and find a hedge prop that we can use that looks a little bit better, but I'm not too stressed about it right now. However, you can see that BOB is a very powerful tool that can really alter a lot of things. In fact, I can even go in and change out the parking spaces to be something like a planner with trees or bushes. So if you are using vanilla assets, but you're working with stuff from the workshop and you have some mods, this might be one for you to grab so that you can customize some of those vanilla assets to look a little bit more appropriate and fit better in your city. So while we look at some cinematics, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that some of this was helpful and be sure to leave a comment down below, like I mentioned earlier, with your thoughts for things for future episodes. And as always, hit the subscribe button. At the end of this video, the next video and the previous video will be listed at the end card. So be sure to check them both out and I will catch you all next time.